Hey, that looks like an interesting planet. Wanna check it out? I think they call it Earth. Uh oh, I think we're out of fuel. I told you to check for fuel before we left. Okay, okay, cool down. All we have to do is scout around to find sources of energy that we can use. Maybe we can ask an Earthling for help. Well, looks like the aliens are in trouble and could be coming to you for help. But you can't help them unless you are aware of all the information about the sources of energy available on Earth. Right? In this lesson, you will learn about various types of energy sources and their characteristics. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to distinguish between non-renewable and renewable sources of energy. Classify sources of energy into renewable and non-renewable. List the characteristics of each source of energy. All sources of energy can be divided into two categories. Non-renewable sources are sources that once used up cannot be replenished in a short period of time. Fossil fuels such as coal, oil, natural gas and nuclear fuels are non-renewable sources of energy. Renewable sources Renewable sources of energy can be replenished in relatively shorter duration and can be reused to generate energy. Non-renewable energy sources are classified into fossil fuels and nuclear fuels. Fossil fuels are found within the rocky layers under the Earth's crust and include coal, oil and natural gas. Remember the first steel rail engines? Those engines burn coal to produce steam that powers the engine. Coal Coal is obtained from plant remains that have not been oxidized and biodegraded over time. It is mined as a solid and is a hard, black-colored, rock-like substance composed of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. Coal is used as a major source of energy since it is readily combustible and possesses a high calorific value. Coal is used to produce around 64% of the world's electricity. Every time the government raises petrol prices, there is a flurry of protests because it raises our expenses significantly. We need petrol for our vehicles and other petroleum-based products to run industries. We obtain petrol from oil. Oil is formed from the fossil remains of animals and plants in a marine environment. These fossil remains turned into crude oil due to heat and pressure from the rocky layers above. We obtain oil by drilling down to the sources containing oil deposits. Crude oil is mainly composed of hydrocarbons that are a varying combination of carbon and hydrogen. Like coal and oil, natural gas is also found in rocky deposits below the Earth's crust. Natural gas is lighter than air and is mostly composed of methane gas. It is extremely flammable. Fossil fuels are burned to heat water and produce steam to turn turbines. The turbines turn generators to produce electricity. For example, coal is crushed to a fine dust and burnt. Oil and gas can be burned directly. Nuclear fuels are radioactive elements that are burned to derive nuclear energy. Compared to fossil fuels, nuclear fuels 
can generate a huge amount of energy from a small quantity, are easy to transport, produce compact waste, and do not cause greenhouse or acid rain effects. Uranium is the most commonly used nuclear fuel for generation of electricity. Tritium and thorium are the alternative nuclear fuels. Nuclear energy can be generated through nuclear fission or fusion. Nuclear fission occurs when an unstable nucleus splits into lighter nuclei. During the split, an enormous amount of energy is released. For example, when an unstable nucleus like uranium-235 is bombarded with a slow-moving neutron, it splits into two lighter nuclei, namely barium and krypton. The fission reaction also releases three neutrons and an enormous amount of energy. We use a process of controlled fission in a nuclear reactor to produce electricity. The heat produced by the reaction is used to convert water into steam, which in turn is used to rotate a turbine and generate electricity. Nuclear fusion involves the coming together of two lighter elements to form a heavy element. Nuclear energy is released when such a reaction occurs. For example, the fusion of two atoms of hydrogen to form an atom of helium releases energy. The release of energy from the sun and the stars is due to a constantly ongoing nuclear fusion of hydrogen atoms into helium. For hundreds of years, we have been using non-renewable energy sources indiscriminately. As a result, these sources are depleting fast. Therefore, the need to find alternative sources of energy is becoming more urgent every day. Scientific data shows that we may run out of natural gas in the next 50 years. All our known sources of oil are likely to last us only for another 70 years. The coal reserves around the world may be used up in the next 300 years. All this is leading to an inevitable energy crunch. Additionally, there are many environmental consequences of using non-renewable sources for generating energy. Burning fossil fuels leads to smog, acid rain and air pollution. Air pollution restricts solar radiation from escaping the Earth's atmosphere. This leads to the greenhouse effect, warming up of the Earth's surface and atmosphere resulting in global warming. Oil exploration is the most commonly reported cause of water pollution in oceans. Disposal of radioactive waste contaminates groundwater and mineral wealth, affecting human and marine population. The major renewable sources of energy are the sun for solar energy, air for wind energy, fallen crops and wood waste for biomass energy, water for hydroelectric energy, and steam produced in the Earth's core for geothermal energy. Scientists are constantly researching new sources for renewable energy. Some types of source in the early stages of development are Tides moving in and out of seashores for tidal energy Ocean water having different temperatures at shallow and deep levels for ocean thermal energy Fuel cells that electrochemically generate energy from chemical reaction of fuels and oxidants we can see solar water heaters at many places, especially at hill stations where heating water consumes a lot of electricity. These heaters make use of solar energy from the sun. The use of solar energy is increasing and pervading our day-to-day -day lives in many ways. Solar cookers and calculators are already quite common. The sun 
is the most efficient source of energy available to us. Solar energy is a non-exhaustible source due to the continuous fusion in the sun's core. We use solar energy in two ways. Converting sunlight into electricity, solar cells, also known as photovoltaic cells. Use silicon to capture sunlight and transform it into electrical energy. As heat, devices such as solar cookers or water heaters use reflectors and radiation absorbing surfaces to trap solar heat. Wind is another freely available source that we use for generating energy. The kinetic energy in wind is converted into other forms of energy using windmills. You may have sometimes seen windmills around the countryside. These windmills are typically used to generate power for local farms. When wind blows, a windmill's blades turn a turbine to produce electricity. To generate huge amounts of electricity, a number of windmills are installed on a wind farm. Hydroelectric power or hydropower refers to the electricity generated using the energy in flowing water. To generate hydroelectric power, flowing water is stored in a dam. When this water is channeled into the power station, its potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. The flowing water turns the turbines in the power plant, transforming the kinetic energy into mechanical energy. The mechanical energy of turbines runs the generators and is converted into electrical energy. Such power plants can ensure a continuous supply of electricity. The Three Gorgs Dam in China the world's largest hydroelectric power plant supplies power to 9 out of 23 provinces in the country. Geothermal energy is derived from steam produced due to extreme heat in the Earth's core. This steam is channeled into power plants to run turbines and generate electricity. Sometimes, a deep well, called an injection, is used to pump water into the heat pocket and pressurize the steam up to the power plant. The world's largest geothermal power plant, the Geysers in California, USA, is in operation since 1924. In rural areas, we often see small-scale biogas plants supplying gas and heat to households for domestic use such as cooking and heating. These plants derive bioenergy by burning biomass in the form of cow dung and converting the chemical energy stored within into heat. Biomass is a renewable, man-made source of energy. Other examples of biomass are wood, crop, manure, alcohol fuels and garbage. We saw that energy can be obtained from a number of sources. However, some sources are better than others. What criteria will you use to compare sources of energy? A good source of energy is one that enables us to do a large amount of work per unit volume or mass, is easily accessible, is easy to store and transport, and is economical.